So our goal is to have accurate language to describe biology and biological processes. And to me, this is, I guess I'm reflecting my own, um, my own challenges or my own adventures or my own learning. It's taken me a while to figure out the difference between the biology and the rest of it, which is gender. I have a a resource here called The Genderbred Person. It's produced by Sam Killerman, who's an extremely entertaining human. Um, he put together a visual to help us define and then use accurate language when we're talking about gender and sex. In our biology class, we focus in on sex. I don't think there's any perfect way of talking about this, but this model seems to work for me. Everything is on a spectrum. <laughs> so if anybody who tells you that anatomy is binary or uh, humans are binary or critters and all the rest of the critters are binary, it, it's just not true. Anatomical sex, just like everything else, exists on a spectrum and it's super interesting. Now, the intention or the, there's two ways of thinking about anatomical sex. We will talk specifically about chromosomes. We will talk about anatomy. We'll talk about gonads. We'll talk about sperm and eggs. That stuff is supposed to inform the sex you were assigned at birth. That's complicated. I don't think the sex you were assigned at birth necessarily matches your anatomical sex, and it certainly doesn't always match your gender or gender expression. Gender is how you feel about your... Um, well, it's how you feel about your gender. And it also is on a spectrum. And there's two aspects of gender. There is gender identity and gender expression. Gender identity is how you feel inside your own body. Like, are you male or female? Are you a man or a woman? Are you a boy or a girl? And I just have to tell you <laughs> that I... That, that's outside our realm, okay? That's not biology. That is inside your own body. But anybody who tells you that gender identity or gender expression should be binary, it's just not accurate. And I think that most of us have experienced um, a gender identity inside our own bodies that doesn't match the social expectations. This is a boy thing. This is, I shouldn't like that or I'm not allowed to like that because it is a boy thing or a boy color or I can't do that job because that's a boy job. Gender identity is how you feel inside. Gender expression is what you put out there. Those don't always match. And who decides what is boy things and what is girl things? And I'll... Pfft, Start looking into where this stuff came from. It's not biology, friends. Biology didn't lead to our gender expectations, and I won't say too much more on that, but I have lots to say about that. Um, the other aspect of this that I think is really interesting is um, sexual attraction, who you're attracted to or not attracted to. And I'll just tell you right now, I don't care. That is not in even any part of the realm. If you are like, I'm never reproducing ever, that's okay because we can talk about heredity of people who are reproducing and it totally still makes sense. Not everyone has to reproduce and that's actually really good because holy cow, there's a lot of us on this planet. Okay, we're focusing on the anatomy. We're focusing on the chromosomes. We're allowing gender to exist. We're not going to gender our language when we're talking about chromosomes and anatomy. And we're going to try to be really careful to speak clearly about the anatomy. Okay, which means let's practice. 
let's practice with our sex chromosomes and look at what those sex chromosomes are and what that means.